But first we enter the Dark Ages. It's that little sliver between the cosmic background radiation and the first stars that form that you see on the image. Though the sliver is pretty tiny, it constitutes about a 400 million year period of time. After this, the first stars begin to form. But wait, we have a problem. If the matter is all evenly distributed throughout the universe, how could it come together to form stars? The average density of our universe is so incredibly small that no particles should have come together to form the stars and galaxies if they were all distributed evenly. Matter must have been distributed more so in one part of the universe than in the others. But saying it doesn't make it so. We need to look for evidence for this. Let's go back a bit. Here we are at the inflationary period. One new thing we should note about this era of time that we didn't look at before, well, it comes from quantum theory. The uncertainty principle, a hallmark of quantum theory, predicts that particles and their antiparticles will spawn at, r at random in space. This occurs very quickly and only on the smallest of scales. These are known as vacuum fluctuations. In the tiny universe we have during inflation, these vacuum fluctuations would have been very dominant. The important thing to notice is that when these vacuum fluctuations appear, the universe is denser in those regions than in the regions where there are no particles. Then we have our inflation that we went through earlier. These regions of extra density are expanded by inflation, and the voids in space are also made bigger. Thus, we have denser regions and empty regions. Okay, we have an explanation. What evidence do we have for this? Well, let's look back at the cosmic background radiation. See all those different colors? Those show minor fluctuations in the smoothness of the background radiation. Though some of it's due to the radiation emitted by the measuring instrument, it does demonstrate that the microwave radiation from certain parts of the universe have a longer wavelength than other parts. Why is this important? Well, the reason they have a longer wavelength is because when the photons move to the denser regions of space, they lost more energy trying to get through and thus have a longer wavelength. So, the cosmic background radiation provides us with the evidence we need to conclude that stars and galaxies can later form. There are denser regions and there are not so dense regions in space, and those denser regions are mapped in the cosmic background radiation by the longer microwave wavelengths. That's really the explanation for them. Well, the rest of the story of the universe is pretty much gravity here. Gravity forms the stars, pulls the stars together to form galaxies, and, well, here we are today. Well, almost. We're missing one piece of the puzzle. If you remember earlier, the Big Bang accounted for hydrogen and helium. What about the other elements? Are they all made in stars? Not quite. Stars just don't get to be the right temperature, really. When a star goes to the last stages of its life, it can produce elements as far as iron. However, stellar nucleosynthesis, as it's called, hits a wall at this point. So where do we go from there? Supernovae. Supernovae are really violent explosions of certain stars, and they sometimes shine bright enough to outshine all the other stars in an entire galaxy. A key thing to note, though, is that they give rise to hot enough conditions to result in the fusion processes that give rise to the rest of the elements we know and love, the ones we're made of. So, there we have it. We went from the beginning of time, pretty much, to where we are today. Not a bad journey once we got past the Dark Ages, things went rather smoothly. Let's run over a few key points before we end of this video. 1. Cosmologists do have ideas about how the universe formed during the Planck era very early on in the universe's history. This would be the cause of the Big Bang itself. We've got plenty of ideas again, but we need a fully formed theory of quantum gravity to fully understand what's going on during this time. 2. Inflation gave rise to density fluctuations in the universe that we see in the cosmic background radiation. This is what allowed stars and galaxies to form. Some regions had more matter than the voids. Third, we really don't know yet why there's more matter than antimatter, though we have plenty of hypotheses. Oh, and while I'm at it, let me point out that the Big Bang Theory is just a theory. And by just a theory, I mean it has a whole host of facts and laws to back it up. It made predictions that have turned out to be incredibly accurate, and the evidence for it being right is, well, overwhelming. Theory may mean guess in everyday English, but not in science. Fourth, gravity pretty much took over during the period after the Dark Ages. It, for the most part, got the stars to form, and got the stars to form into galaxies. Fifth, Big Bang nucleosynthesis, stellar nucleosynthesis, and supernova nucleosynthesis gave rise to all of the elements we are familiar with today, with the heavier elements all being formed during supernova explosions. Well, that's all I've got. One of my hopes is that you've learned a little something about the history of our universe. The other is that you've gained a bit of appreciation for the power of science in tackling questions that didn't seem possible to answer. The Big Bang Theory was the product of several generations of scientists, and it was through discussion, theorizing, and experimentation that we have ended up where we are today, with a theory that has taken us from the beginning of time through 14 billion years of cosmic evolution to where we are today.